All right, welcome back, everyone. This is, I know it looks the same as previous, but it's not the same. I just did this lab. What I did is trying to save you time. Uh, we did, this is what's considered a point-to-point -point connection. You know that when you did your static routes and, uh, and RIP and EIGRP. All right, so point-to-point -point connection. We have serial connections over here, and we have Ethernet down here. All right, we have the IP addresses that we're using between the, between the routers, and we have the, or the networks that we're using between the routers and the networks that we're using for our LANs. So all that's already configured. So we can take a look at that. Let's go to router one, which is right there. Let me move this over here. All right, and let's open it up a little bit. All right, and you can see that you're connected directly to the 10.1.1.4, to the 172.31.1.0, and the 192.168.1.0. And that's, there is no routing protocol because, or else you would see it on here, uh, and, or you're not learning everything. Everything is connected routes. And you see the interfaces that you're using. Now, let's talk about this interface before we begin. It's one of the things I failed to mention in the terminology portion of it. It's the loopback, the loopback address. The loopback address is used uh, in OSPF when you're doing um, the designated router and backup designated router. You use it because you can use loopbacks as a virtual interface. It's not real. All right. And uh, that's one of the things that you can use to trump, if you would, uh, the elections. You can fix the elections by using loopback addresses. Okay. But you can use the loopback addresses as you would any other interface. So you can ping back and forth. So testing purposes, things of that nature. So I created, and you can have a different loopback interface per, per router. What is the limitation on loopback addresses? I really have not found a book that has told me, hey, this is how many loopbacks you can create. And I really haven't sat there to find out how many loopbacks you can create. All right, so if you have to create more than what, you know, then let's say, let's give it a number, 999,000. You have to create more than that, wow, I hope you're getting paid a lot of money. All right, but uh, regardless of the matter, what you need to understand is that loopbacks can be used as just testing purposes, but they still need to be advertised within OSPF. Now, the type of OSPF that we're doing is considered point to point. When you do a point to point OSPF, there is no election. Now, that's a loaded question with a loaded answer. Because the only reason, the only reason that there is no election is because you have this serial that's going across. That's the only reason. I'm going to show you in another lab before we end this lesson. It's going to be a comparison between point-to-point -point and multi-axis. All right, but I'm going to show you several things that we're going to be looking at. We're actually going to be comparing these two interfaces, the serial interface and the facility interface, so you can notice the difference and things I'm going to point out to you that you need to look at. The configuration of OSPF is simple. It is simple. There's nothing to it. Understanding what you're looking at, that's a different story. All right, then you need to understand what you're looking at, and that's what I'm going to point out to you. So what we're going to do is now is configure OSPF for IP version 4, and we're going to go ahead and uh, advertise using network statements. So here we'll use the actual network that we are connected to. So we are connected to the 10.1.1.4, and we are connected to the 192.168.1.0, but don't forget you have that loopback, so you're also connected. And let's use our handy-dandy show commands, show protocols. You can see that I'm using a loopback zero, and let's bring it up further. You can see that your fast ethernet is a slash 24. You can see that um, you're using a slash 30, obviously, for the ones on the serial. And your loopback is using also a slash 24. Okay, and normally I like to use a slash 30 for the loopbacks, and I will, or slash 32, I should say, when I use uh, loopbacks for the election process, which will be in the next lesson, I believe. All right, but let's go ahead and configure OSPF now that we know the networks that we belong to, right? We belong to the 192.168.1.0, the 10.1.1.4, and the 172.31.1.0. So let's go ahead and configure OSPF.
config T on router one. Router OSPF. Now you need to you need to pick a process ID number. You have from one through sixty five thousand five hundred and thirty five. Do you need to know the range? Yes, you need to know the range. Will they try and trick you with the range? Yes, they'll try and trick you with the range. Know that your process ID number is from one through 65,535. Remember that the process ID number, all it does, it keeps track of that database, that link state database that it creates, and it gives it the stability of it, all right? So that's what that number is for, and that is it. So you can pick, and it's local, it's local. So I can pick whatever number I want. So we usually just pick one, all right? Now we advertise using network statements, network. Uh, we said, what was it, 192.168.1.0.0.0.0.255. Area, and we'll pick area zero, just to keep it real world, all right? Area zero. Uh, remember your wildcard masking. You can use your constant, 255, 255, 255, 255, and then subtract your mask from it, and that will give you your wildcard mask. Or if you just drew the line between the third and the fourth octet and add the bit values to the right, you know that it would be 255. Zeros mean match exactly, and the ones in the fourth octet mean any. Any numbers within that range from 1 to 255. All right, or from 0 to 255. Now, the next network we're going to advertise is the serial, which is 10.1.1.4, 0.0.0.3. It's a standard 30. Again, do your subtraction. Area, 0. Must be in the same area. Must be in the same area. And then the last one, which is your loopback, you need to advertise that as well. It's extremely important. Uh, 172.31.1.0 using a 24, 000, 255, area 0. All right, and that's it. You're done. There's, there's nothing else to that. I'm going to do a WR. You would exit all the way out to privilege mode and do a copy run start, enter, enter. Now, if you forget to advertise a network, OSPF is finicky big time. It will take a sweet time before it decides that, hey, I'm going to go ahead and now start to say, okay, you put in a new network. I'm going to start recalculating. I'm going to start saying, hey, there's a new network involved, and it's got to send to its neighbor because it has to create that neighbor relationship. And while we're on the subject, let me show you. In order, it has to go through this process right here. Do you need to know the state? More or less. They're not going to ask you questions about the state, but I want you to understand that because we're going to look at it once we do the multi-axis. Okay, even here, when we start looking at the information. When router, let's say here we got three routers. We're now going to connect router one and router two. When router one and router two start sending information to each other, when they start to send information, they're considered in a down state, okay? Once they receive the information, now they change from down to initialization. They start looking at things. When they reply to each other, meaning, hey, I got information from you, okay? I got information from you, so now we're going to have a two-way state that we may start sharing information. And what happens? The routers begin to exchange their link state database. Their link state database. I forgot what this abbreviation is. the same thing as this. It's just DBD, database, whatever. I forgot what it stands for. Link state database. That's when they go to exchange start. Now they start exchanging information. Uh, it's like the cliff notes of what they have and what you have. The one goes first, then the other one sends. All right? When the databases are acknowledged, now they're in the loading state. And then they say, hey, wait a minute, router one. I received information from you. I got this database information, but I don't have this network. I don't know about this network, and that's where it sends the link state request. It says, hey, I need you to send me an update about that network, because I don't know about it. So, uh, one of the routers, and again, they take their turns. They take their turn. They'll say, okay, router two sends to router one, hey, listen, I got your database. I, have, I, have, I, I know about these networks. I don't know about that one. So, can you please send me an update? He sends them a link state request. 
to send him an update about that day, that network that he didn't know about. And router one says, why, of course, my pleasure. And then router one does the same thing. Router one says, hey, wait a minute, you sent me something that I don't know about. Can you please send, send him a request to send him a link to that update? So that going back and forth, they're in a loading state. That's when you start creating the neighbors, you see full loading done. When full loading done, bam, we're in a full state. We've changed information. We now know about each other's networks. We're fully, we know everything. At that time is when shortest path first starts calculating. Why? Because that's, now that I know about all the networks, now the topology table gets created, that's where the shortest path starts getting its calculations from. So you can see that there's a lot of work, especially if it's a huge network. It's got to go through this process right here. And right in here, listen, if you're not in the same autonomous system, and if you don't have the same hellos, you're not going to get past this state right here. You'll never make it to two-way. Do you have the same autonomous system number that I do? Let me see. Do you have the same subnet mask that I do? Do you have the same hellos that I do? We're not using security, so I'm not going to worry about that. But it does worry about the other three. And if it doesn't pass this, you won't make it past the initialization state. That's all I'm trying to say. So when you're looking, you're doing these show commands, and you, you will be doing show IP OSPF uh, topology. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, show IP OSPF interface, whatever interface that we're going to look at. You're going to see, especially in the multi-access network, you're going to see if it's in a two-way state, if it's in a full state, or is it a drawther state. And you need to understand what the heck that means. Okay? So, but this is the process. How just two routers are becoming neighbors. So now imagine if you have 50 routers in one area, and each one of those routers are connected to each other. They need to become neighbors. All this information is being sent back and forth, and then the calculation begins, and then people can start sending the information. So, I mean, obviously it's transparent to the user, and use, all you see is full loading done. You're like, yes, it's working. But then when you start doing your show commands, you need to understand, hey, this stopped here, this stopped here, what's going on? So you need to understand those. But I just wanted to show you that, because that is important. So we did our OSPF for router one, perfect. Obviously, we're not going to get an update from anybody else because there is no other OSPF on the network. So let's go ahead and open up router two. Now with router two, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to do this side, I'm going to go this way when I'm doing the second router because I don't want to get interrupted. Is it not? I will. All right, and I believe we also have loopbacks on this one. Show IP and brief, and we do as a 24. So we're going to go config t router. Let me open it up a little bit more. Okay, router OSPF one again doesn't really matter. It's local. Network, we're going to use the one going that way, which is the 10.1.1.8, and it's a 30, 0, 0, 0, 0, 3. and we're using area 0, same area, network, uh, 192.168.2.0.000.255, oops, area, 0, there you go, network, 172.31.1, oh, dot 2.0, and we're using uh, also a uh, 24 mask, area zero, and now let's do the serial to the left, which is, I'm just going to up arrow through here, and I'm just going to put four, okay, I'm going to do a do WR, all right, we should be getting OSPF again, it's not as fast as EIGRP, but we should start getting, you see there it says full loading done. See that full loading? That's the man, it already exchanged, it links to the database, everybody knows about the networks. 
So it created that neighbor relationship. All right, let's do the last router. I'll do the LAN, the, uh, the uh, loopback address, and then I'll do the WAN. Which is funny that I say WAN. Well, we're not using any WAN protocols, but in actuality we are. We're not because this HDLC is considered a WAN protocol. But anytime you see a, a line like this, you consider that a you consider it right in a drawing. Let's say that's a WAN. Uh, let's do a show protocols. Let's use that command. All right, so you can see the there we go. All right, so config T router. OSPF1. Let's open it up more. Network. Let's use let's put the LAN 192.168.3.0.000255. Area 0. Let's put the loop back. Network 172.31.3.0.000.255. Area 0. And then the WAN. Network 10.1.1.8, which is a 30, area 0. Okay, do the OER. Let's wait for it to do the full loading. All right, that's one of the signs you say, hey, I am getting updates. That's a good thing. Boom, awesome. All right, I'm going to do a control Z. And right from router, the last router, I'm going to do a show IP route. Awesome, I see O's, I see O's. All right, which is good. You see that this is not the same lab. We don't have the gateway of last resort or anything like that. There is no other routing protocol on here but OSPF. We are learning about the 10.1.1.4 network from OSPF. We know that it's OSPF, not only because you see an O there, but we have an administrative distance of 110. This number right next to that, that is the cost. That is the cost that the shortest path first algorithm actually calculated. You're learning it via the 10.1.1.9 and on your S010. That's how you read that. The same thing for the rest. There are your loopbacks right here that you're learning. The 1, the 2, okay? You are connected directly to the 3. And you're learning about the lands right here and you're connected about the 3. And each one you see has a different cost of who you're connected to. But, and that's great. That you know how, you need to learn how to read the routing table and who's updating you and what their admin is and the cost and all that and where it's coming from, what interface and all. But with OSPF, one of the things that you want to look at, one of the print screens that you need to be looking at is show IP, OSPF, interface. I'm going to look at the serial interface, S0 slash 1 slash 0. I'm going to hit enter. I'll bring that up. Let's take a look at our key things here. Great. Hey, our serial 1 is up, up. We know that. We know that our address is 10.1.1.10. The process ID number is 1, but the router ID, which is the router's number, okay, it shows the loopback address. Now, uh, I'm supposed to explain this in, in uh, multi-axis, but I'm going to explain it now because it shows the highest loopback address for it to be the router ID. If that loopback address wouldn't be there, it would have chosen the 192.168.3. Uh, dot network or because that would be the highest IP address that's one of the things that it does all right but it chose the loop back because the loop back was configured one of the things that you need to pay attention to is the network type it is a point to point all right it gives you the cost value important since it's a point to point the type of it is a point to point the priority is zero if there's a zero priority that means there is no election Therefore, you will have no designated router, no backup designated router. Okay? And there you see your hellos, your default values. All right? They all must be the same in order for them to become neighbors. But things you need to look at. The router ID. The network type. The priority. that if you have backup or designated routers and your hello and that this is where your focus needs to be when you're taking your examination all right but you can see on a point to point that there is no election and like i said that's a full loaded
question. And I'm not trying to confuse you, I'm trying to make you think. Let's take a look at the LAN interface, the F00. Show IP OSPF interface F0 slash 0. Same router ID, right? Different address, obviously. But now the type of network is broadcast. So now we have a cost of 1. Therefore, we're now a priority of 1. Now we have a designated router, which is the router ID. So it actually created an election. It created an election. The designated router ID is 172.31.3.1 because it's the loopback. But there is no backup designated router because there's nothing else that it's talking to. So he thinks he's the only designated router on that particular broadcast domain. But you're saying, Lance, you, well, that makes sense, Lance, because it's not a point-to-point -point network. Then that's going to happen because it's a broadcast, like you said previously, and you would be right. But let me show you something else. And it will be the same throughout each router. It will be the same throughout each router, and I'll show you. Let's look at the middle router. Let's open that up. Let's do first show IP route that we are routing correctly. We have all the different routes that we need to know about right there. We're going to do a show IP OSPF uh, S0 slash 0 slash 0. I believe we're using S0 slash 0 slash 0. Yeah. Okay, might as well full screen it. Okay. Oops. Show IP. OSPF, oh, show IP, OSPF interface, S0 slash 0 slash 0. All right, point to point, network type point to point, zero priority, all right, no designated router, no backup. Again, the loopback is the router ID, the name of the router, how you identify the router, and the hellos are the same. If we were to do the same thing for the S1, I believe that's the interface that we're using. Now it, it says, again, priority zero, all right? That means that there's no designated router, no backup. Hellos are the same. But if we do the LAN, F0 slash zero, now things change again. So broadcast environment, we have a priority of one. Then we have a designated router. And he thinks he is the only, well, he is really, that interface, the only designated router within that broadcast domain. So again, you see the differences between point-to-point -point and broadcast. But let me show you a little lab, a comparison lab. These are point-to-point. -point. These are point-to-point -point connections. And I'll come down here. I believe I already did. OSPF, yes, there's your full loading done. All right, let's maximize this. Enable, show IP, route. We're connected directly to it, but if we do a uh, show IP OSPF and what interface are we using? S000. Show IP OSPF interface S0 slash 0 slash 0. Oh, hey, still holds true, right? Point to point. Zero priority, no designated router, no backup designated router. Hellos are the same. Hellos will never change unless you actually go into the interface and do a um, IP OSPF hello and then change the hello uh, timer. You're not going to mess with the timers. You just got to make sure they're all the same. All right, but it's a serial interface. It's a serial interface. What happens in, if we do a point-to-point -point with Ethernet? Bring that up. Excuse me. Show IP OSPF interface F0 slash 0. Look how interesting. We have a designated router and a backup designated router. We have a priority of one. Network type is broadcast. So what does that tell you? That tells you that if you're in an Ethernet network, you will have broadcast you will have IPv4 obviously broadcast and you will have elections being run 
right? Because a priority, the only priority that's the, the zero priority, that's the only one that doesn't run the election. Anything else will run the election. So he has a priority of one. There's your designated router. There's your backup designated router. You can see the whole holes are still the same. But it ran an election. Let's take a look at the other router, see what he says. Let's minimize this. Let's go to the next router. Maximize it. Go to the CLI. Enable. Show IP OSPF int F0 slash 0. So we have a designated router 6 and, I'll, and the backup designated router 5. So it's using the highest IP address as the designated router and the lowest IP address, or the second highest IP address, if you would, as a backup designated router. So it's not just that it's point to point. It's the fact that it's a point to point serial connection. If it will be a point to point like this one is, that is Ethernet, then you do run an election because Ethernet has broadcast. Point to point. But now we have an Ethernet cable. No longer is it a serial cable. So now we run an election at that point. How interesting. So, food for thought. Will you get this? No. They're not going to be like that on the test, but this is something for you to be aware of when you get out there or if you already are out there that say hey okay so now I know why this is going on on my network because controlling the DR and the BDR is extremely important and I, I mean I don't want to get too whatever but if you're introducing external routes into a multi-axis uh, or not multi-axis I'm sorry multiple area OSPF that could be an issue with your DR and BDR. All right, so now you know. It's not just that it's point to point. It's the fact that it's point to point with the serial. And that's how you'll see it on your test. That's how you'll see it more likely. They're not going to be this tricky. Maybe in the next version of the test, if one ever, ever exists, I'm sure it will. Uh, they'll do something like this maybe. All right, so keep an eye out on that. Do your own labs. Try this lab. Okay, and see and create your OSPF because you have Ethernet, you have that different priority. And remember, you can control a priority. I can go in here and change this priority to a zero, change that priority to a zero, and there will be no election. They will not participate in any election. So I can control that by changing the priority number to zero. So if this is what you want, you can do it, but you have to change the priority number to zero. Just wanted to give you that food for thought. So this is point-to-point -point OSPF. That's all you really need to know. The configuration of OSPF is pretty straightforward. You go router OSPF, the process ID number, you got from 1 to 65,535. You do your network statement, the exact network they're connected to with the wildcard mask and the area. And you must advertise also your loopback if you have any. You must advertise it in OSPF at that time. If you do it later, OSPF is going to take a sweet time to put it in there. So make sure you put everything in there in the same area. Make sure your wall card masks are correct. Remember, you can use that constant 255s all the way across on top. And you just put your subnet mask to the bottom and subtract. And that's the way you get your subnet mask. So as you can see, OSPF is not something difficult. It's understanding when you're looking at these show commands what it is that you're looking at. I'll see you guys in the next section.